Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. On the bench today, RAE. I don't know who Ray is, but um, he makes distributors. Uh, might be some guy in China by the looks of things. Uh, this is sent up uh, from Melbourne by the old Padre uh, for his vehicle. Um, at the moment, the uh, the car in question is a 66 Mustang. It's got a Mallory dual point distributor on it um, that does not have vacuum advance. Mallory dual point, not a bad distributor. Um, it's nice to get away from points if you can. They do make an electronic conversion for it. Guessing that's it. Uh, but what I did want to do with this thing was put on vacuum advance. So we're going to do away with the Mallory and put in this one. Um, now this was sold to him by, I think this came from Custom Mustangs down in Victoria. I haven't had much to do with them myself, but uh, Dad's been dealing with him since he moved down there and uh, seems to like the bloke. This kit comes for, I don't know, I think it's around a couple hundred bucks or something. Uh, comes with complete distributor, as you see, and a matching coil, which is actually a Goss branded coil. Uh, so it's not just a generic, well I mean it is a generic coil with a bit of a, an etch done on the top but it's at least not just a complete no-name coil um, but then again it probably just is a no-name coil with a name etch on the top uh, but the distributor is the main thing, uh, the main topic of interest for me today uh, because I really didn't know what to expect because there's so much junk coming out of China and different corners of the globe at the moment uh, that you really don't know what to expect. So uh, this thing, I'm going to have a bit of a look at it. And of course, the first thing you do when you get something new is tear it to pieces, right? So I'm going to go and at least have a bit of a dig into this and see what it's made of. So right from the get-go, you can see that it does look for all the world like a uh, basic uh, Bosch knockoff distributor. Um, it f has a reasonably good feel to it. It's obviously cast and then machined down. Uh, to give it a bit of a billet look around the um, around the base and the shaft housing, uh, the rest of the housing here is just left with a completely uh, raw sort of cast feel to it. Um, they come with a black or a blue cap. Uh, we opted for the black one. Um, yeah, your mileage may vary. The cap does seem to be. It's not quite the same as sort of the uh, later model Clevelands. They came out with uh, what felt like a really sort of robust nylon uh, like a, a fiberglass reinforced nylon feeling uh, distributor cap this one feels a little bit more brittle to that doesn't have any branding on it or or anything of that nature so i'm just going to assume that it's a um a fairly generic um piece of gear made in some corner of the world that didn't want to put their name to it looking on the inside again you can see another uh unbranded rotor button this does have a slightly tougher feel to it what she's made of doesn't feel like anything special it is pretty tough plastic though but there's no um doesn't seem to be doesn't feel like there's any sort of reinforcing or anything in there but it's a rotor button doesn't need to be doesn't need to be they were made out of bakelite and god knows what for so many years and they never broke so it doesn't need to be anything special um the pulse generator module in here again just looks like a direct um, Bosch knockoff. It may well be a Bosch part. I don't know. We're going to pull that out and have a bit of squeeze at that. Now I'm told that this is shipped with a genuine Bosch module. Um, haven't had a look yet. Open her up and she. Come on. So far it's looking pretty promising. Well, look at there. It does actually say Bosch on it. And it's just a standard Bosch 021 module. Um, I'm going to assume that it's a genuine Bosch. Who knows what's getting uh, ripped off in different corners of the country or different corners of the world these days. But now uh, that looks for all the world to me like, a, um, like the real McCoy Bosch module. Let's dig a little deeper. Well... Plenty of thermal compound on there. <laughs> it didn't skimp on that. Working around that sort of stuff, it might be time to glove up, I think. She's not good for you, that stuff. 
ready when you are. So to really get into it, we're going to have to pull things apart in a particular order. There she blows. So what I want to see here is uh, what the advanced weights and springs look like underneath here. No nasty surprises yet. Son of a... Now I don't know if these are actually any finer, but they might give me a better angle of attack. So as you can see I've got the... Um, managed to get the rotor off the top. That was a fight, getting the um, lower circlip off is a mongrel of a thing because they don't give you a lot of space in there to play with to be able to get a set of circlip pliers. I tried three sets, none of them wanted to work. Uh, and they're the finest ones that I've got. So I'm going to pull the VAC advance capsule off. Obviously a brand new unit, hasn't been remanufactured or anything. This whole, this whole uh, piece is sold as a brand new unit, so I'm not expecting anything to be second hand. Uh, it doesn't have the usual number that's uh, stamped into them. used to actually work with a uh, refurbished one of these where uh, we had a guy who used to open up these canisters, put a new rubber diaphragm, uh, crimp them closed again. And uh, there were differences um, between the amount of stroke and the uh, vacuum required to actuate it. Um, I'll put the vacuum gauge on that a little bit and just see what it pulls back out. Uh, I'll pull the stator out now. Usual set screws that sit in there. That feels nice and smooth. There's something giving a bit of a click in there. I don't know what it is. You can see already some of the tape that goes around to wrap the coil up is already starting to come a bit loose. I wouldn't expect that to continue too much more, so I might just nip that off. Or maybe just put a little bit of glue on there just to stick that down, but not something you'd expect to see in a brand new device, a brand new unit. So far, still looking good. Getting down to the guts. Okay, so we've got laminated steel uh, advance weights, which is a good thing. I wasn't sure what I was going to find, whether I was going to find, you know, some sort of pop metal pieces of crap or um, sintered, uh, uh, sintered metal or something of some description, but these laminated steel weights are very good. Get our stand a little bit of absorbent felt in there that uh, holds onto a bit of oil and lets it trickle down. I don't know if you can see there but these advanced weights have little plastic tips on them. Uh, sometimes if you put them in something that is a bit erratic at idle they can chatter so that's not a bad little thing. More tools! I'll get my little baby pliers onto here so I can undo these springs. I think I'll just undo them at the steel end, just to save those clips for Dad. He doesn't even know that I'm pulling it apart. I'll try to do as little damage as possible. Nicely greased from the factory. The grease doesn't look like anything special. It's definitely not molly grease, nothing too crazy. Probably not a high temperature thing. I'm going to undo, undo these roll pins and uh, take the shaft off and get in. We'll have a look and see what that bearing is. Okay, the pins are out. Oh my goodness, it's a two-piece shaft. Would you look at that? Damn. Not uh, not polarized. There's no set way that it needs to go together. But that is a surprise. <laughs> maybe it's common, maybe it's not. But I haven't encountered that for a while. That's interesting. There is one shim there to take care of our end float. I'll we'll use a knockometer to... Okay, so looking at this, the shaft has obviously a, a proper oil drive cut into it, so that's going to pull oil up the shaft uh, to look after our bronze bearing that's in the bottom here. It's really just to stop it from rattling around and chewing into the aluminium, so uh, yeah, it is our sacrificial part, but damn, you know, unless something goes drastically wrong, you run it completely out of oil, uh, that bushing in there is going to last forever. Up the top, there is a bearing in there. It is 
an R8 RS. Uh, so we'll measure that up. So the inner is going to be 12.7. Okay, so it's an imperial bearing. Let's let's go to imperial. So the inner. Okay, so we've got half inch shaft. And the outer is inch and a quarter. Like the pedant in me says, pull that bearing off and put on a Japanese-made bearing because this doesn't have any maker marks on it or anything. But again, we're uh, we're talking about zero, you know, near as damn it to zero axial load. The only reason that bearing would uh, suffer any undue stress is if maybe one of these weights was to fly off. But even then, it's going to destroy the entire distributor before the bearing is the issue. So I'm quite happy to leave that in there. But no, so far I am pretty damn happy with this. I um, I really can't fault this for for a reproduction distributor. Uh, after having overhauled hundreds of the original Bosch ones, I have to say that this is as good as, if not better, um, in its manufacturing. So far, looking pretty good, Dad. So here it is in all its disassembled glory. Um, I really can't fault it, other than you know this little bit of tape. Uh, the winding tape that covers up around here that's starting to peel off. I'm just going to put a little bit of dupe on that just to keep it in place. Um, again, it's not going to cause any issues. If it does unwind, it's just meh, a bit disappointing to see that. But brand new from the distributor, our Bosch part back, we're talking 25 years ago. They were around back then, I think about three, $400, maybe more. Um, but this whole thing here, as you see it with the cap and the coil, rotor brand new vac advance cap a bearing in the top of it which it's got a genuine or what looks to be a genuine bosch 021 module on it um, everything seems to be finished nicely you know the plating on everything's good the machining and here is nice and clean uh scented bronze bush in the bottom as a whole this this is not a bad deal this is not a bad deal gonna get the vacuum pump onto this vacuum diaphragm and uh just see what sort of vacuum it requires to pull it on Okay, so we're going to start putting some hurt on, and we'll see where it starts to retract. So it's just starting to move there, and it looks to be all in by about 10 inches of mercury. That's pretty standard for one of these. So if it wasn't going to pull all the way in until, you know, 20 inches or something stupid like that, um, then you'd say, okay, we're going to have to look at sourcing something a bit more original, but that's going to be fine. And well, friends, there she be, back... In her former glory, just like the day she was born. It, they, they were born. I want to assume it's gender, after all. I have to say that, overall, I am pretty darn impressed with the value here. Um, everything looks to be as good as, if not better, than um, the original Bosch distributors, uh, electronic distributors of the 1980s, or even, I suppose, the 1970s. These, I do believe, came out on... Uh, or this style also came out on some XCs. Uh, 1978 thereabouts and yeah other than that little bit of tape that was unwinding from the um, from the inductor coil uh, I really can't fault the thing damn good deal I think and by the way there's no um, he, dad paid full tilt for this there's no uh, no freebies and I'm not chasing any freebies but um, yeah it's the uh, RAE I could say there are uh, part of my initials and then, I don't know, electronics, engineering, who knows. But um, here's a QR code. I don't know if you can take the time to scan that. But uh, these are distributed uh, from uh, Beacon Court and Hallam in Victoria. So uh, rae.com.au is the website. This one, like I said, came from Custom Mustangs. Um, and I have to say, overall, pretty solid looking bit of gear. Time will tell, but I'm happy to put it in the car. Cheers, guys.